Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Flux Motorsport TV. You're here with your host this evening, Lecky2000. And I'm here with uh, Spankmeyer and we're here for the uh, club race. Say good good afternoon or good evening to everybody here, uh, Spankmeyer. Hello everyone. Yeah, that's nice to have you with us, mate. So, um, uh, without further ado, um, th this evening we bring to you our um, one of our Thursday night club races. So this is not a regular championship race. Uh, but this is uh, one of our regular feature races uh, in which we uh, uh, we get the lads together. It's bit, a bit more of a, a, a more of a, a drive and driver for uh, the guys. Still uh, try and take it pretty seriously, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's not a uh, qualified session. It's just a practice session, and the format for this race is ten laps initially, and then we'll go over to our, our feature race. And tonight we are around Brands Hatch GP. So the lads are just lining up on the grid. Um, we're just about to get underway. Now we have had some practice coming into this session. Uh, obviously Bruce Law doing uh, doing pretty well, just as they are under starters orders. And the uh, lights are down and the go, go, go. So Audi R8, LMS all round here at Brands Hatch as they come into Turn 1. And it's Dirt Diggle and CDM Trooper that get away best. I think that's Al Axon just behind him. Uh, you can see him as uh, all your 82. And Bruce Law hot on his heels just behind that. A little flash of the lights there, I think, though, from uh, from Al just behind uh, CDN there, just coming in third place. We're still on board with Dirk Diggler, who's currently leading his field, and he looks like he's pulling a little bit of a gap away to CDN Trooper behind him. Exciting start to this race, Bank Man. What do you think? Yeah, it is. It's very clean through the first few corners. I can see Bruce is really needing to get past uh, Al Axon as soon as he can. He's been following right tight all the way through the first three, four corners. So uh, it's he's to get past him quickly yeah we've got Al Axon oh it looks like there's just been an incident there is that CDM that's just gone round I think it is CDM running back down the order though as you just see him in the background it looked like an unaided spin as Bruce and Al Axon like you just said there are really tight uh, they're out with each other but if they come through uh, into this left hand turn there so just through the top section of the round hatch coming through into this fast long back section now yeah, I reckon um, that Bruce needs to needs to put his foot down now and get rid of this pack. Get on the back of a uh, third. I'll get on the back of Dirk, actually. No, he's gone straight up to second, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, that's it. Dirk, Dirk's got a bit of a gap away. He had CDM created a, a bit of a buffer there. And CDM was a little bit slower than uh, than the, the rest of the pack in, in the practice session. However, could have just been waiting it out. Again, it wasn't a qualifying session. Um, but yeah, it did, did look, look like it. He's letting Dirk get away naturally anyway. So I think he's got a lot of, you know, a large gap to catch up now. So you have to try and work hard. Uh, and I don't think uh, Al has seen the, uh, uh, you know, the last of the action here. He's got a destroyer all over his, uh, his rear end now. Yes, and um, CDN's in the pits. Obviously, he had to go in for some repair, which isn't great on a 10 lap race. So uh, he's got a fair amount of work to come back and, and um, make something of this damage. Yeah, you can see the, the quite front end of that car is taking a, a, a real hammer in. So. Uh, again, I think it was an un un unaided spin that one, so he's just come uh, through the top section of Brands Hatch. He's a uh, real left uh, tyres at the grass. It's exactly uh, the two corners I don't like at Brands, is these two right handers. Yeah, it's the, it's, they are very quick parts of the circuit, or they are if you get them right, and if you, if you get them wrong, you can very, very quickly find yourself in the armor core, as we've just seen. Yeah. So, Alex is just doing his best here, though. But we're currently on, uh, just coming towards uh, the end of lap two, just coming up to three in lap two. Uh, and we're on board with Destroyer, who's, like I said, he's right up the truck at the Alaxon. These two look like they're holding each other up now. And McToasty, who admittedly said he was struggling a little bit in the um, uh, in this particular GT3 car, not his favourite, the, uh, the Audi, uh, but he does look like he's catching these two now. Yeah, they are losing time, time, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, I mean, Alex is doing his best, but I think he's coming under that much pressure, and he's just he's just conceded that position there, so that's a great move there for this driver on the inside. He didn't fight too much, so he'd fought, I think, three or four corners prior to that, um, and really made this driver work for it. I just want to jump on board with uh, with Alno, just to see how he throws with McTorsey behind him, and whether McTorsey is going to try and apply the same amount of pressure. You can think that Ali must have our commentary on live, because he certainly listened to our advice, which is that he was being held up fighting and uh, he had an eye on uh, Mike Toasty coming up behind him so now he can settle down and try and get some clean laps in. Yeah it does make sense you know not to cause an accident you know they've got, they've got another race after this one the last thing you want to do is be uh, uh, you know marring the, the first race with, uh, uh, with a stupid decision. 
Uh, but yeah, just jumped, jumped over to second place now. So Bruce Law clearly putting the uh, the hammer down here, trying to catch up with Dirk Diggler. And I don't think that Dirk Diggler's going to have the pace to be able to uh, to outlast him here. I think Bruce Law probably will uh, come through with the, with the pace of that last lap. 124-1. It's a clear second faster than anybody else on track. Uh, I think he's really going to struggle, despite though, you know, having nearly a second gap in front of him now. Yeah, it's come a bit too early for him, hasn't it? He'd hoped that Bruce might have been held back in the in the pack, but CDN going off opened the door for him, and he's, if he'd have got him through, got himself up to six or seven laps, he might have been able to just see it through to the end. But he's, he's too early on in, in the race to to hold off this pressure for this long. I think so, and I think you know Bruce potentially has got a little bit more in him. I think just from looking at the timing board, he's just maintaining that gap, you know, just just under half a second away from him. And I think he probably will do for the next. The next few laps, just sit there, soak up some of the pressure, let somebody else push somebody out of the way in front, uh, and then he'll probably make his move about halfway through this race, going pretty slow. But what a battle we've got going on here between uh, between these three. Al Acton, uh, the fourth, Matosi in fifth, and Taijo in sixth place. So, again, Taijo, not forgetting he's on the uh, on the control pad. So, uh, I always feel that, that you know, the, those, those players on the control pad there are always up against it, in my opinion. Oh, uh, Taijo doesn't need any favours. He's won enough races, so. Uh... Well, indeed he has. I think it's just a <laughs> testament to, uh, I, uh, you know, how much of a car nutter that he actually is. <laughs> He's just had a minor little ax uh, off, off, uh, off the black stuff there on the back of that first right hander. He just dropped back a little bit. I think so. I think he's trying to push to try and uh, uh, stick up with, he, with these two in front. Maybe it's a big ask for him uh, just at the moment. Uh, but Matosti just sitting in that draft uh, of Alan. He, he's almost, again, biding his time, just waiting for um, uh, for Al to make, make a mistake. Doesn't seem like he, he's trying to um, snatch any time in the braking zones, or he doesn't really look like he's trying to uh, push that car right to its limits. It looks like he's just sat in the draft. But if he's not careful, Tango is getting pretty close. Yeah. So well, I don't suppose they need to worry about tyre wear. Um, for such a short race, you see, so uh, they should be going all out, really. It's just how, how accurate they've been with their fueling. Yeah, on a, on a turn like race, you, you would hope, e even in the glorious sunshine, which I believe it's not, I believe it's just, just got a light cover and a cloud here at Grand Tax for today. Um, but but even, even with these weather conditions, I'd be very surprised if, uh, uh, if they did have start to scrub their tyres. As Tadjo starts to take a sniff there around the inside and then around the outside with a, a bit toasty, though. Sajo in the uh, in the white livery, it's in the, uh, the black and turquoise livery, and orange livery there. Just a note, Bruce has made his way through now, so Bruce is front. He is indeed, and he's put, not only is he, is he through, but he's put a, uh, uh, a considerable margin in, 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 you know, the space of a quarter of a lap in between. And Dirk uh, destroys up there, so there must have been something that's happened there. We've got them all up, bunched up, and the destroyer was a few seconds behind, at least two seconds off, so... Perhaps in that move there's been a bit, a bit of a, a shuffle and uh, that's allowed Destroy to get slightly back up to the uh, back of Dirk. So Dirk now has no pressure for second. Though. Yeah, there's no damage though. I'm just looking at his car and I can't, can't see any uh, any scrubs on that car. So I think, like you said, it might have just been a you know, human error uh, on his part though. Well, the fact that Bruce is back with him, so I reckon they probably might have both gone long from the corner, you know, more blocking rather than contact. But whatever they've been doing, it's been allowing Destroyer to, to have a silent little uh, attack up from the backside of uh, Dirk and Bruce. See if he can get himself past Dirk. Uh, we, we, we've just missed uh, Tajo going past McTorsten now, so McTorsten would be willing to push that position. Uh, and Tajo seems to have snapped that, so uh, maybe resting on his laurels a little bit there, McTorsten trying to play uh, the too safe of the game. Uh, and just allow Tajo to, to make his way past, or it could be tactic this from McTorsten. Uh, you know, let the guy behind try and uh, yeah. Will not do some of the hard work, try and nip at his heels, and you never know that two could come, you know, come together with the contact. And um, he, he might find a gap where previously you think there is none. Well, let's stay with this, but Porsche one is in the pits, so I suspect that he's coming with damage, or we just had damage repaired. It looks like it's a short pit stop, though, so um, whatever damage that he has had. There is a little uh, bit of damage. 225, yeah, a little bit of the front end, so it does look like he, he's made contact oh. with the wall, though. And he's out in front of uh, Bruce. Oh, and he's. Yeah, front of Bruce, but right, right on the inside. Yeah, of the coming it's in, a, like hot, hot then, but I mean, it's a uh, typical it's exit, isn't it? You can do to get out of the way, yeah. But there we are, he's, he does pull over, yeah. That's nice where Porsche went. Well, 
but what's that done as far as uh, our leaders are concerned? Um, he certainly closed the gap up between uh, Dirt Diggler and uh, Destroyer right behind him. I think Destroyer's going to try and put a move on now. Again, one of the most difficult corners that left hand. I, re I really find that he's uh, uh, a corner that tends to catch drivers out. Less so in the rear wheels, uh, much more in the front wheel drive, which obviously I'm more familiar with. Uh, but yeah, a lot of front, front end slip on that corner, you've got to take it at a very weird angle. Yeah, I thought again, the entry. Um, Changes for me every single lap. Uh, you know, whether you go long and have a late apex, or whether you go in tight and then peel out after. Yeah, and again, it depends what the weather's like and what your tyre was doing. It depends how aggressive you can hit that corner and how much time you can make up. I've previously in touring car races lost the race on uh, on that corner purely from pushing too hard in the first half of the race and destroying the tyres. So uh, it, it's a very difficult track, uh, Brands Arctic so quick with so uh, so many elevation changes and so many undulations at the same time there's not many tracks where you can take the same kind of car set up and apply that elsewhere and the car perform well um, most tracks are unique but Brands I think is in, a, is in the league of its own Destroy's really putting the pressure on he's very keen to get through he's going to try on the outside and uh, they've just made contact there so that was door to door action there was that a push to pass? No, I'm not sure. No, that it was, was. A defending on the inside line. He covered that. Destroyer took the took the space to go on the outside, but they both got to go around side by side. They, they were side by side, and yeah. there was still plenty of space on track. Yeah. So uh, I'd, I'd say that was uh, a bit of argy bargy, but also a bit more as they say. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> so just flip back over to that battle for uh, for essentially what was fourth place. It still is a battle for fourth place, so. The gap closing uh, closing up between uh, uh, between Al again, so Tiger and McToasty, um, albeit the switched order, really aren't, um, aren't able to uh, to get past Al, but they're all, also not losing him either. Uh, yeah, it's looking kind of like even down, hasn't it? I think Al's done a good job of just concentrating on his own race and um, sticking to clean laps. Well, if you, I mean, look at the difference between between the two drivers. I mean. Uh, you can see Tigel be behind him, he possibly has got a little bit more speed coming into the corners and when he's hitting the brakes that the front lap that only is dipping down quite a bit more, suggesting that maybe he's coming there with just a bit more speed, but it, the way that the uh, um, the car's handling for Al is just a lot smoother and it just seems to be flowing through the corners a bit more, um, not quite going oh. as aggressive, just as we see him go there, so maybe... And I've just maybe seen the destroyer. Wonder. Destroyer's in the background. He's dropping down the order, so I think he's gone off corner one. I think he has, and maybe that's what's put the um, uh, put the guys off. They can see, you know, maybe a spin in yeah. the background. Um, well, all this hard work has found itself back up in third. Lap nine. Uh, I mean, if, if you're going to get it wrong, that is not the lap to get it wrong on, is it? So <laughs> we're going into uh, the penultimate lap now for, for Bruce, at least. Uh, I know potentially there might be one or two uh, guys at the back that have been. Uh, lap so uh, again just a quick run through the order on lap nine in ninth spot we could have got Porsche men after that front end damage again I think he's picked up a little bit more front end damage by the looks of that see the entry up after what looked like a great start to this race looked like he was running with the big dogs at the front uh, and then a bit of a uh, spin coming into uh, uh, those quick right handers seeing, seeing him drop down to eighth spot a green game that we've not seen much of in this race he's pretty much maintained seventh spot throughout uh, after those initial uh, initial spins uh, I destroyer. Think, sorry, go on. I was just going to say, I think the, the use of this 10 lap race is, is effectively like a quality in, in, in a way, in that these mistakes that they've made in this short race, they've, they've got the eye on the bigger race, um, the 30 minute race. So I think they'll be really keen to see how they perform in the second race here because it'll be a lot tighter, I reckon. You think they'll be a bit more aggressive here? Yeah, I think this Maybe is like their quality. I think they're, um, you know, it's a short sprint. They don't, they don't want to make mistakes and carry damage through in the 30 minute race, so uh, I think this one's a little bit more all out. And I reckon the next one will be a lot tighter. I think you're right. Uh, I think this is this is a bit of a precursor to, uh, um, to, you know, to, to really getting their, their teeth into it, into the big race. But uh, yeah, just to, just to come on with the standings, we've got um, just after Green Game, we've got Destroyer in six spot, as we've seen. Um, he was battling with Tajo and Tolsty, and it looks like. Um, Toasting Tajo, um, that gap looks like it's 
from the bigger the tide Joe uh, is going to be able to uh, pull back in between him next five seconds I think um, uh, um, behind the back of a toasty That's yeah Bruce. indeed it is it's Bruce near the finish line um, now Bruce is coming up to the last couple of corners uh, got, as we know Alex in third D Diggler just on his own behind as Bruce go. comes over the line with a flash of the lights and a bit of a wiggle <laughs> so uh, that's Bruce Law for the win as we see Dirt Diggler just come in not too far behind him so good performance there from Dirt Diggler and fairly consistent throughout um, I think he did the right thing by uh, holding Bruce off just for as long as he could uh, Al Axon coming in there another solid race from Al it did well to hold off that barrage that onslaught they had throughout that race from Toasty and Tajo behind him Tajo obviously coming off a little bit worse for work uh, out that mix uh, and Destroyer as well uh, he's going to be kicking himself for the um, mistake there so yeah. yeah interesting first race and CDN as well so you've got CDN Destroyer and Tajo all up in the mix for the next next race and that's that's going to be a really really busy top six well, again the, like we've just said the, the race format is uh, it's the same same car same track uh, but it's going to be a uh, a 30 minute session um, which is uh, we'll let you know exactly how many laps that is it was 22 23 I think so enough yeah, my yeah. calculations so, but we'll uh, we'll be back with a very very short uh, intermission uh, to bring you the second race. Please bear with us. <laughs> 